Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Leading the Standard. I am Kelly Taylor, and you are joining us for episode 19, From Quality Manager to Quality Leader, Five Steps to Elevate Your Career. Now, this episode is inspired by Lead the Standard newsletter 66, available on LinkedIn. And today we are going to dig into a topic which both Jackie and I and many of our audience members can relate to. We're talking about moving beyond the day-to-day of quality management and stepping up as a leader and how there's a few crucial steps, which Jackie will share with us, that can really push your career forward. So if you've ever wondered what it takes to go from managing to leading, you're in the right place. Jackie, welcome. Thanks, Kelly. I'm here. You're here. (laughs) I'm in a talking mood today. It wasn't last week. Um, But... I'm, I am going to hand over to you now. As always, you have another great story to share with us to get the conversation started. So did you want to jump straight in? Yep, I will. Um, before that, I, before I tell my story, I like the wording you just used there, mm. moving beyond the day-to-day mm. of quality management and stepping up as a leader. So mm. really that day-to-day of quality management is... Living it. Yeah, and meeting expectations, not mm. exceeding. I'm not bagging people for meeting expectations, but like that's that's the that's the it's minimum not. required. Yeah, that's yeah. you know, congratulations. You know, you're <laughs> you're meeting the requirements. Well done. But the next step is that yeah, high performance, and we can talk about high performing systems, but this is about you as a quality leader and Mm. driving that high performance. So I just want to comment, I like that wording that you use from day to day to stepping up as a leader. Thank you. (laughs) I learned from the best. (laughs) No, it it really, yeah, hits the nail on the head. So speaking of which, like I used to be a quality manager. I don't know, was I a day to day quality manager or was I a quality leader? I'm not sure. I think over the years you grow into it. Um, Obviously, it's a learning process and that's what we're here to talk about, um, what what those steps are. And, you know, it doesn't happen straight away, doesn't happen overnight. But I suppose just to share my experience in that space, um, we're going to go way, way back in time. Um, we're going to go back to 1998. <laughs> very retro of us. Oh, very retro. So in 1998, I was working as a client trainer, so for a software development company. Um, this company um, had recently achieved ISO 9001 certification, but they'd used an external consultant um, to help them to build the system. Um, and and for ongoing maintenance. At some point, the company I was working for decided that it would be beneficial to have someone internal as a quality manager in a full-time position. So the job came up on, you know, the internal job board and I, the head office was in Melbourne. I was based in Brisbane. And I was reading the job ad I actually had no clue what ISO 9001 was, which was a bit weird considering they'd just got their ISO 9001 (laughs) certification. (laughs) Not sure how they did that if the staff weren't aware. No, I'm not either on reflection. Um, And so when I saw the job, I I started looking into what what is this ISO 9001 stuff about Um, and, you know, what did it look like for this company I was working for? and. That's where I discovered that, like, I I actually bought myself a standard and thought, oh, I'm going to read this and see what it's about. I hadn't applied for the job yet. I was just doing some investigation. And I remember having a highlighter um, and going through and go, oh, that's cool. That's cool. In the end, I gave up highlighting because I basically highlighted nearly (laughs) everything. Um, And... I suppose what stunned me was that there was actually this book or this standard that had been written based on the way that I'd always worked 
I didn't, I never realised that there was something in the world that supported, yeah, you know, my values essentially and and how how they were in, embedded, integrated into a business. And when I discovered this, I thought, oh, I reckon I could do this job. Like I think I'm I'm made for this job. So I decided to apply for the position. Even though it was meant to be in Melbourne, I wasn't moving to Melbourne. So anyway, long story short, I got the job. And I was allowed to stay in Brisbane um, and, you know, obviously visiting Melbourne uh, regularly. But that job actually changed the complete direction of my career. Like, as I said, prior to that, I was a, a trainer for the company and I trained the clients on the on the new software um, within their businesses. So training's always been there, but this whole ISO world just opened up. So you know, th- this is where things really started to change for me. It was a huge win for me, but then I do recall I got the job. I, you know, I'd been there maybe a couple of years before before that in my, um, you know, existing role. Um, but then I realised I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I love it, but I'll learn. <laughs> like I love the yeah I like <clears throat> the standard made sense to me I I I loved it but and I thought oh okay now what I'm the quality manager at this national software company with hundreds of employees what am I doing what does me being a quality quality manager mean in this in this role fortunately the consultant and I hit it off and we're still in contact to this day. So I'm not going to do the maths how many years <laughs> that is from 1998. Um, so she she was an amazing mentor for me. So we built a strong relationship. She supported and basically like did a handover with me. Yeah. So she guided me. She she um we did internal audits together, so I watched her do those and I had a go and she gave me feedback. And also, though, you know, that was like on the job stuff. Um, I also went and did, um, you know, obviously training, so formal training and, and qualifications. So that helped me to understand all the all those highlighted areas and then what it meant in the business that I was working um, was working in. So all of that gave me that foundation but as I said earlier was I a day-to-day quality manager or was I a quality leader um you know on reflection obviously initially I was just ticking the boxes because I was learning Mm. and that's okay that was the stage yeah yeah, that was the stage I was at yeah but until you get through that stage you, you can't go from A to Z straight away. You've got to go through those little stepping stones all the way through. So as I was writing the article that this um, episode's based on, that's what made me think, okay, so what does it look like? Like, you know, looking back on in hindsight, what do those steps look like? So that's where I came up with what I've called... <laughs> They come up with some great names. Um, the quality <laughs> leadership pyramid. Okay, so you and I will break that down a little bit further, but I know you like me to give a short answer first as to what that looks like. <laughs> so to transition from a quality manager to a leader, it's essential to focus on just five key areas, and these build upon each other, as I mentioned. The quality leadership pyramid builds on five foundational steps. So demonstrating how education, mentorship, leadership skills, strategic thinking and credibility all collectively come together to elevate you to that leadership pinnacle, I suppose, moving you up. So that pyramid includes five focus areas, education, mentorship, leadership, 
strategy, and the ultimate pinnacle, credibility. So the culmination of these five steps leads you to the, this strong quality leadership, as well as being a continual cycle to maintain active leadership in quality management. Now, I like that word, active yeah. leadership. Mm, we talked about active leadership before. Um, yeah, and I think we've talked about active wisdom. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, I feel like we are not a passive pair. Everything we do is in an active state, and I think it's important. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, actually. So what is active leadership then to you? Throw me under. Um, yeah. <laughs> Throw you it's, under the bus. Yeah. It's, I think it is very much being aware of, as you said, your your skills, your experience, your capabilities, your stage in your journey, but then sharing that with your team. And that relates to everything, not just quality, um, but making sure that you are actively working on that yourself, but sharing that with your team and building that trust and that relationship, um, not just sitting back and letting people come to you when they need advice or things go wrong or, yeah, yeah, yeah supporting yeah. others on the journey. You While you're a few, like you may be a few steps ahead, but you're still leading someone behind you along that way. Yeah, yeah. So that's active leadership. And when when I agree with all of that, and also maybe staying curious, um, mm. staying current, trying new things, not being scared to try new things, um, not being scared of feedback, and um, oh, you know, things didn't work, mm. and that's okay. Being comfortable with that in itself, mm. I think goes in line with that active leadership. So you, you can, so, I, I don't know, I just envision someone, you know, being proactive, positive, curious, and, and pulling people along with them. Mm. Yeah. So they're the five steps. And as I said, the culmination of them you know, you move up from education up right up to um, credibility. So it's a step-by-step -step process. But as I said, it's also a continual cycle. So it sort of works both ways. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want me to start breaking each of them down? Yeah, let's let's get into that. Okay. I've got okay. ideas and thoughts and I don't okay. want to okay. step on Cause time. Because <laughs> there's five of them. So let, let's yeah. start with the first, the 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 foundation level. So the first focus area to transition from a quality manager to a leader is education. So this is recognised training and qualifications, gaining any formal education and certifications that go along with it within quality management. It could be any of the ISO standards really. This builds that strong foundation. We really shouldn't be moving any further up until we have this education platform under our belt. Okay. Mm. You know a lot about this, Kelly. I hope so. That's my job. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, you know a lot about this because you come from Atoll, but we both do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, and this is one of the things we see it quite often is that someone will come to us and our team and say, I've been working in the quality space for all of these years and all of this time and I just really need a piece of paper. Mm. And, yeah, and look, sometimes, yeah, you really do just need a piece of paper, but do you really just need the piece of paper? <laughs> um, and we we see the mm. feedback at the end of the course so often oh I actually I learned something when I did your course I've been a quality manager for 20 years but I learned something it's funny that that's what a training <laughs> and education is about <laughs> but yeah getting those qualifications finding out what you don't know because you don't know what you don't know until that. you do yeah and we see that all of the time um with our students but again um 
sometimes look, we are in this world, and I think we're tr- tr- oddly transitioning out of this a little bit where people's, the piece of paper was necessary for a lot of things um, previously, and now it's not so much. But people are learning, look, I need to develop my skills. I need to understand more about it. I need a different perspective yeah. about how this is. Oh, I've already done this training with this training provider, but I'm actually really curious about what you guys have to say about it as well. Um, so, yeah, making sure that you have that formal education, those certificates. The recognised ones. Exactly, yeah, yeah, making sure that it isn't just, <laughs> and I was actually going back, as you were telling your story, way back in 1998, we didn't have Google. Were you even Ch- born? Well, we, we did really little. Had, Google was a baby, um, but we couldn't just Google, give me the ISO standards, tell me the answer. We couldn't say, chat GPT, write my resume and tell me <laughs> all the things I need to know. We could ask no. Jeeves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there wasn't there wasn't the education that the opportunities that are available now to us. The information. So yeah. 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 And look, I know that we kind of t- we're going to touch on a few other ways that we can educate ourselves as we go through the pyramid. But yes, making sure that that qualification you have is, as you said, recognized but also relevant. Yeah. Yeah, because we see that all the time. I have, and I, I love my accountant, but we see all of the time, I'm an accountant, I'm want, I'm going to do this. And there's, there's crossovers, but they're crossovers. They, they are two different things. So yeah, there's still some sure. gaps. Exactly. So yeah. the education will fill those gaps and let you know what you didn't know you didn't know. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I suppose, and we also get some people coming to us that have, and you mentioned this, have completed training uh, with another training provider, mm-hmm. but it's just like uh, an introductory course or you get a certificate of attendance. It's not yeah. actually recognized. So you have, because if you want to go on to get personnel certification, et cetera, you mm-hmm. do need uh, an exemplar global certified training provider or recognized training provider yeah. so just make sure you keep an eye out for that exemplar global logo yeah. um, that's from an international standpoint but there's others like uh, under our rto banner for lead order skill set yeah um, but yeah just make sure you do your homework and don't waste your valuable time and money doing other no the wrong stuff because yeah we we do get people that um yeah unfortunately go down that path yeah and i think that's a really good point there there are different levels like any education there are different levels so if you're just wanting to educate yourself to inform yourself we mm. have those introductory courses. Mm-hmm. I just Absolutely. Want to, I just want to learn something well, I want my CPD yeah. points my CPD yeah, short courses Yes, but if you're wanting a career, then a qualification is going to, as you said, be that foundation. There is the difference. That's the word that I was going to say. This is the foundation. So make this education, the recognised qualification, your Mm. foundation. Mm. And, again, sorry, I feel like I'm just, I'm doing all of these warning signs here. I I want to... I want to highlight to people who are listening, who are looking at that education space, particularly with quality, uh, and you can see it a bit with OH&S as well. Um, I'm not so sure if it's an issue with environment, but when you are looking for a qualification in quality specifically, make sure that you ask, is this a qualification in ISO 9001 quality? And the reason I ask say that is because we have so many students come to us um, who say, oh, I have a diploma of quality auditing. Great. You have a diploma in really good auditing. (laughs) Two thumbs up. (laughs) It's not a diploma in ISO 9001. So if you're looking, if you're inquiring about education qualifications, 
for a specific ISO standard, make sure you ask about the ISO standard. Yeah. Because again, um, OHS a deploy a, a diploma of OHS management mm. is around legislation, etc. It's not Correct. ISO forty five thousand and one. So yes. again, making sure that you're getting the right qualification for what you're wanting to use. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, that's a really good point, actually, because that is very confusing. Mm, yeah, I yeah. don't like saying to people, I'm sorry, I can't IPLU for your bachelor's yeah. degree because it has absolutely nothing to do with ISO. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a nice feeling to say to somebody. No, really. I know, because I know, they put the hard work in, but, yeah, it's just it's not aligned. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good breakdown of the foundation. I'm going to pinch that word from you. Okay. So that's the foundation. And as you can see, very important, all right? So the second focus area to transition from a quality manager to a leader is mentorship, mm. okay? And it's, this is a great add-on to education. So mentorship, so guidance from an expert, learning from experienced mentors or consultants. They can provide their insights, their experiences and help you to work your way through any challenges and help you to make some wins as well, I guess. Mm. Yeah. And as I said before, you, you were really lucky in having that consultant as a mentor because you couldn't Google, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, just realised that I've shared my own age. <laughs> there. But um, we had computers and email when I was at school. Um, but, <laughs> but again, that meant that one-on-one -on -one relationship with a mentor, again, regardless quality, workplace, whatever, the right mentor is going to lift you up. It's going, yeah. they're going to be that sounding board. Um, yeah. And you don't need to necessarily work one-on-one -on -one directly um, as a, well, in the same business, the same organisation. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, again, we've had a few, we were actually talking with um, with Kathy uh, on Monday, our NDIS I want to say guru, but I feel that yeah, that's I, not, that word that's not a sufficient. Too. It's not a sufficient <laughs> phrase Expert. to describe Kathy. She's enthusiast, <laughs> enthusiast. You get. But um, we so many of our students looking in that space, we connect with them. Kathy's never met them before. We've got these great communities, and and leverage your network to find people that you will yeah. work well with or that yeah. have the experience that you're after. Um, again, we had wonderful student with our um. Oh, lovely young girl. I shouldn't say girl. She's a mum. A young, lovely young woman. <laughs> Compared from to North you, Queensland. <laughs> yeah. Um, she, yeah, I probably could have been her mum. Um, from <laughs> North Queensland, who again we we couldn't help her in that space, but we were able to connect her through our network to yes. somebody who would had that same level and experience and relatability. So it doesn't have to be your boss. It doesn't have to be someone else in the building. You, there are other ways and opportunities to find someone in that industry who can support and mentor and guide you and to yeah. lift that up. Yeah. And really the reason why this mentorship is the next step from education is that, you know, you come away with the knowledge from mm. your qualifications, but then the next step, and I think that's what I shared in my story, it was like, oh, what does this mean here? I Like I know the theory, I know the business that I work for, what their system is, what does it mean when I bring them together? How do I apply my knowledge? Exactly. So it's that work application and this, this is where having someone to support you, whether internal, internal or external, um, free or paid as well, so, you know, this is really important for um, yeah, your, your trajectory moving forward. And I was actually thinking this while you were talking about that foundation step of education, Kelly. I, I have a business coach, mm. okay, um, and I meet with her every week. And last week 
was a pivotal moment for me. Um, you know, I've built businesses. Anyone might think I might know what I'm doing, but I you always need someone to give you a different perspective. And there was a there was a question that I asked. The answer she gave me, I already knew. Validation. But I, yeah, but I didn't, I, I sort of thought, mm, whatever, you know, I couldn't, couldn't be bothered. But then, you know, she, one, reminded me about this process, mm. gave me the courage to give it a go and, and the confidence to know it was the right thing to do. Mm. And then she supported me. So I, I put together what, what her suggestion was, sent it to her, she reviewed it. And so it, we don't always know everything. Like I've read hundreds if not thousands of business books but Million. because I can't remember it all, no. you know, so and that, that's sort of a broad business scope. I need her to remind me as we go through and what the best tools are, et cetera. So if we narrow this scope down to the ISO world, there's people out there that know this ISO world. And if you're sharing your challenges with them, they've, they've already experienced it and they can go bang, 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 bang. Have you tried this? Have you tried this? Have you tried this? It's just, you know how and you and I actually do it um, here at work. It's when when you have another person's perspective, I think you use the word perspective. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, otherwise you get really bogged down in your own thoughts. But if you have someone external, it helps you sort of see the light. Yeah. Yeah. Is it validate or give a differing, different perspective? share yep. their experience, learn from other people's mistakes. Like you yep. don't have to make all the mistakes yourself. Someone's already yep. made that mistake. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. So We've been doing this that... before we started recording today. We were bouncing things <laughs> I off. know. I know. So, always. Always. Yeah. yeah so they're the first two steps, education, mentorship. Mm -hmm. So the third focus area to transition from a quality manager to a leader, oh, funny enough, is <laughs> leadership. So people management, leadership skills, so developing the ability to manage, motivate people effectively. So this includes um, team calibration, uh, managing and addressing any conflicts within that team, as well as inspiring others, so making quality champions, OH&S champions. So this sort of changes that whole perspective, moving from education, mentoring, and it's like, oh, now I need to bring people along for the ride. Yeah. And this can be the biggest challenge, I have to say, because... Mm. This, like, and we're talking about a quality manager to a leader. It can be an OH&S manager to a, to a leader. It's not just about the systems. Mm. That's mm. probably the least or the smallest part of your challenge. The biggest challenge will be the people that you need to pull along on the ride with you. Yeah. Get them on board. Get them as passionate about it as you are. It can be frustrating. Mm. It can take longer than what you want it to take. A lot longer. <laughs> A lot longer. A lot longer. Yeah. You have to um, try different methods, different ways of talking to them, different activities different ways of involving them it's mm -hmm. sort of like trial and error because every person's different as well what what you do one way might bring some people on board but then you've still got you know others that they don't respond well to that actually this mm -hmm. reminds me of something funny um because it's about how you ask questions and get them involved the other day I was having a conversation with my son. He's 21. 
And I, I asked him a question not to tell him what to do but to get him to come up with the solution, if you know what I mean. And so I worded it like that and he and he just turned around and said to me wow that was pretty smart mum <laughs> <laughs> like he saw straight he through knew right between the lines <laughs> he knew exactly what I was doing <laughs> and he just sort of laughed at me but I do you know I take my hat off to him that he picked up that that's what I was doing but I didn't want to tell him what to do. I wanted him to come up with his own solution. But that sort of, you know, it, it's like when you're um, conducting your audits as well. Mm. It's the questions that you ask, um, yeah. how you ask the questions, how you're getting them to come along on the ride with you. And you need them to make that decision, not you can't shut. We've had this conversation before, Kelly. Yeah. You can't shove it down their throats. No, no. I think too the challenge here with, with leadership, well, not the challenge, is well, we've talked about the day to day quality management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This phase, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but this phase of leadership, I don't see this as I in in this context. I am the manager of this system and everyone must follow me. You could be the quality manager in a group of people and you can mm -hmm. lead and inspire them. You don't have to be the manager yeah. to demonstrate leadership in that space. Yeah. And that's probably a good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, you're doing the day-to-day -day things and share with them, look, look at this system, look how great this is, look how easy this makes my life all of those things. And look, that that could lead to management roles and supervisor roles, et cetera. But you don't have to have that title to no. be a leader. No, no. That quality champion, bringing people along. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, leading by example, something yeah. that they say. Um, now, obviously, in the formal quality world um, under... <laughs> Um, 5.3, which is your roles, responsibilities and authorities, that that key word of authority is very important for someone that's been tasked with that quality manager role. Um, mm -hmm. But you're right, there's different work groups, different leaders at all the different levels that can be your champion. It will be a champion and bring people along with them. Yeah. I'm actually going to go back in time a little bit here. And you've just got me thinking then, again, talking at those different levels. I remember I was working at a um, property developer and there was one gentleman who everybody loved, like everybody loved. He'd been there for 30, 40, 50 years. He didn't have a, a senior management role. He was just mm, one of the team. Mm -hmm. But everyone respected him and went to him yeah. for advice before they went to anybody else, probably yeah. because he liked to go, let's go have a beer and talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, again, that there are going to be people, I suppose, that he was kind of that fine line between leadership, leadership and mentorship in that space. Mm, mm. So, yeah. yeah. Was, That's actually very... a really good point that you just made there because mm. that that there is a crossover there, isn't there, between leadership and mentorship to a degree? Yeah, yeah. It was, and I think that comes well, when you get to that pin. I suppose he'd probably gone to that pinnacle and then just relaxed his way back down yeah. through time. And, yeah, but yeah. You said it is a continual loop. So. It is absolutely. I'm glad you were listening, Kelly. <laughs> I try. I try. <laughs> so we've got three so far. What are they? Education, Mission. mentoring, leadership. and leadership. Yep. So the fourth focus area to transition from a quality manager to a leader ooh, is strategy. So systems thinking, strategic improvement. So um, seeing the big picture understanding how the systems interact 
uh, identifying improvement opportunities, continual improvement as well. And I suppose initiating um, like quality, new quality changes to the system, as we were talking about leadership, mentoring, so all in line with the strategic direction or the objectives of the business. So that's an interesting thought. So strategy. So you can actually see that we're elevating here. We've got mm. education, mentoring, leadership, and now we're really upping it to strategy, which is that overarching direction of the systems that, that align with the business strategy as well. You can see that we're really pushing you now. Mm. You're moving towards that or you're moving away from that day-to-day -day that Kelly mentioned earlier and we're really pushing you now to elevate your leadership. And I think the, I think the phrase there we're pushing you or you're you're pushing yourself I think is under look from experience hand up is difficult it's very easy to well it's not very easy it depends on your team I've I've, I've always th thought it was easy but it's not to mentor or to inspire your team and to bring them along that journey and it's really easy to get excited and be in the day to day and oh, I'm going to work through this or I can do that and I can do that and I'll share that with you and I'll do this with you. You can see how excited I'm getting about doing all of these systems and processes and things. Um, but then to stop and think, okay, I need to let go of that and look at the bigger picture. And yeah, I said, hand up, this is a challenge I'm facing at the moment. Is going from being in it in the day-to-day -to, -day to share, well, letting go or making sure that we have the sufficient systems, strategies, plans to move Sources. forward with that. Yeah. 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 It's not just about, hi, team, let's manage this. It is that next level, bigger picture and getting that balance between the two and reining yourself in. I've, I'm finding I'm more and more following my mentor, Jackie, who has all of these <laughs> wonderful big picture ideas and great improvements, but how do we apply them? That's yeah. that's base. Yeah. And, look, that's a whole other topic, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, um, because um, we do, I actually thought, I think it is actually coming up because I remember I writing a newsletter about keeping my nose out of things as an auditor, <laughs> like in the scope. I think it's I think it's coming up maybe in a few weeks, but mm. it is an ongoing challenge because uh, what happens is it's easy just to go back to that stuff yeah. that you're used to. It's you know it's the small rocks is the least resistance. So and I still do it. It's like ah, yeah. oh, my brain's not working today. I'm just going to go and do this really, and I was going to say easy stuff. It's not necessarily easy stuff. It's just stuff that you've done for a long familiar. time. Familiar. Yes, it's familiar and comfortable. Yeah. So you just yeah. fall back into it, whereas when yeah. you start to elevate yourself, it's really hard. It's mm. challenging, and there's this sort of pushback, and, you know, you need a lot of your brain cells to to, to, I suppose, initiate it and move through it until mm -hmm. it becomes comfortable. Yeah. So, yeah, we we both get it, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we live it. We live it. Yes, but that's right. That's why I said even with this pyramid, it's not something that you just do straight away. Don't no. stress yourself out about it. Mm. You can have a plan and we did have a plan and then life happens and then your plan doesn't go as planned or a new challenge, new opportunity, um, uh, yeah, all sorts of things adjust and adapt and change and you need to be 
aware of that. Yeah, I think that's a key word, aware. Mm. Yeah, aware yeah. that you're going back down that rabbit hole to that comfortable part mm. and pulling yourself back out. But, you know, congratulations if you're at this this stage and I acknowledge that it can be hard. Mm. It, it, yeah, it is hard. So well done. <laughs> so what are the four so far? Education as the foundation. Mentoring. mentoring leadership leadership oh and then we're really strategy. pushing it to strategy so that means the fifth and final focus area to transition from a quality manager to a leader is credibility so people management like i suppose building your um what's the word your Thought leadership within quality management, OH&S management and what, whatever standard that you work in, building that thought leadership, um, credibility, people will come to you to ask how to do this. And you can see how this does that full cycle. It starts mm. going through this full cycle. So we've gone from that, and I said it's these are stepping stones, but it's also a continual cycle. So with this credibility, you might loop back down to education as well. So build build your next level that's your pyramid right. on top of your pyramid on top of your pyramid in your pyramid in your pyramid. Exactly, exactly. So who's are you scared of credibility? Does it frighten you? For me, it it does because that means that I need to very much step outside of my comfort zone. I'm great in my little community, but credibility is going that one step beyond your comfortable community. Yes. And the perfect example we talked about, uh, Kathy earlier. Kathy's reached that mm-hmm. incredible stage. She's yeah. out everywhere. You've done that. You're out everywhere. Um but you also have that mentoring ability. So you've kind of gone beyond your group and expanded. Oh, that's a good, yeah. And that my word that was going through is it's more external. And that's why yes. I asked, does that yeah. scare you? Um, yeah. Because, yeah, sometimes, and look, I was probably scaring you with you, like not you in particular. All of you that are listening or watching, even moving to that strategic level, Okay, mm. strategy being that fourth level, now it's credibility and you do have that external uh, recognition is a good word. So mm, people reputation. will, yeah, people will go, oh, yeah, do you, you know, you know, Kathy Reese, as we said, oh, yeah, we know Kathy. So you're, you, you're known in the industry and I think you're spot on there, Kelly. It's not only, you know, the people that you work with, internally day to day you'll also people will also know you externally Mm. so you've built that credibility and I think it's important to be respectful of that Mm. absolutely and a a good example of this is um, LinkedIn there are people on there that I have never met who've never Mm -hmm. had any touch contact whatever with Atoll but I have read some of their articles Mm -hmm. that I understand or trust or respect. So I'm now going to those people. I'm not having that direct networking connection, but I trust those people as a credible source to get my information relating to whatever. Yes. Oh, I like that. You you trust them. So, Yeah. yeah, you're aligned with their opinions and values yes absolutely that's a really good way of putting it so is this a little bit of responsibility maybe I I believe so yeah you've obviously there's a level of responsibility with all of them but this is putting yeah, you're putting yourself out there and you once you've reached this level, the information that you are giving needs to be honest, 
open. You have to demonstrate your integrity, all of those values uh, and principles of an, an audit are personal behaviors because what you put out there, so people are going to trust that at, at this level as yeah. truth. And we all know that there's a lot of fake news um, out there in the world at the moment and, and AI, and we want to kind of breach past that at this point. We want people to go, yeah. actually, that person I trust and, and understand and yeah. what they've said is respectful, accurate, um, from experience, all yeah. of those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, a big thing. And that um, I read a draft a uh, book on ISO 35001 on the weekend. That's how I spend my weekends. <laughs> um, written by a credible um, person in bio-risk, Stefan Wagner, mm -hmm. and he's written a book on ISO 35001, one of our lovely students. Mm -hmm. um, and 35001 is a new standard. So when I was reading his draft, I was reading it to provide feedback and comments um, as per his request. Um, something I noted in the feedback I gave him is that he, he didn't always agree with what was written in the standard and in the clauses, but how he went about explaining that was very respectful. Mm. He didn't say, oh, this is a load of crap. What are they talking about? He, yeah. It was very respectful how he wrote it. Um, and, and, you know, it, you, you didn't think, oh, this bloke, you know, he thinks he knows everything, but because of the way he went about it, he, all he did was demonstrate that he really knows his stuff in bio risk. Yeah. It, I'm, I'm actually hearing a conversation with Stefan as we're doing that. I can see how exactly how he would have come across that, but another, um, quote that I've heard this week from another wonderful person was, that's an interesting perspective. I'll allow you to have that opinion. I, my experience, or I understand, or so being able is it there that open to improvement, but be acknowledging other people's yes. point of view and the differences. Yeah, that that gives you some credibility. Yeah. There are people in that LinkedIn world that say this shouldn't be in the standard oh, because this I is, know. yeah, you know exactly who I'm talking about. I know. Sorry, I'm, I'm out of that group now. I That's don't. right. Yeah. That's right. And that goes back to how you lead, how you mentor as well. And mm -hmm. that's what I mentioned about how you ask questions also. So it all goes back to what comes out of your mouth and how, how you say it. Mm. You yeah. have to remember Tone and pitch and body language. I know that this is a podcast primarily, but we're on YouTube as well, so you get all of the theatricals. Yeah. But tone and pitch are important in this environment. When you're writing something, you still mm. need to be aware of the tone of your language. So, again, being mindful of words and, yeah, how Absolutely. people understand or interpret things as well. Absolutely. In written form. So that's probably a good segue. Mm. because I'll use my words just to close yeah. off on what <laughs> on what we've covered and do a bit of a quick recap for everyone unless you've got something else to add no I think no. yeah I think I've got a lot of ideas and thoughts but I'm I'm noting them down for future episodes um and I do know what we're recording for next week so that that I think will flow on from this nicely as well. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So my book of the day. <laughs> so to summarize the key points or those foundations of the quality leadership pyramid, we had education as a foundation. Then that led to mentorship, leadership, strategy, and then finally credibility. So as we said, they all build upon each other but they also provide support, this continu a continual cycle as well. So as always, before I hand it back to Kelly, I just like to close with stay curious and always lead the standard. By staying curious and leading the standard, you'll continually find new opportunities for growth and excellence 
in your career. Thank you, Jackie. Um, so yeah, that wraps up today's episode on from quality to manager to quality <laughs> leader and those five steps to elevate your career. I do hope that you found our discussion valuable. I like to share our lessons learned so you can make them, don't have to make the mistakes that we made and vice versa. <laughs> um, do join us next week. As I said, we've got a really good one as always, um, but we're going to be discussing one of our most frequently asked questions and I did touch on this earlier in today's podcast I've got my qualification now what <laughs> so yeah that one is going to be a cracker we touched on education before here is the the backwards version of that so please as Jackie said until next time keep leading the standard and we'll see you then bye for now Thanks for joining us once again as we lead the standard. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast for more episodes just like this. And don't forget to leave a review if you found today's episode informative and inspiring. If you're already an Atoll student, remember participating in live Q&A sessions just like this is one of the exclusive perks of your enrolment. And if you're not already a student, join us at our website, www.auditortrainingonline.com to learn more about our courses and how you can start making a difference in your career in ISO management system standards. So join us again next week as we not just meet the standards, but we lead them.